The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think I have come to establish peace on earth? No, I tell you from now on, division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two, two against three. A father will be divided against his son, and the son against his father, a mother against her daughter, and daughter against her mother, and a mother-in-law against her mother-in-law. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not one of those Sundays in which you come to church to feel all warm and cuddly inside with a gospel like that greeting you. The Gospel of Luke tells us where Jesus stands. But let's look at it from the perspective of the composition of the scriptures first. That first reading from Jeremiah is a, is a kind of political religious ex event happening. We're not supposed to be politically and religiously involved with the same issues in our church, but we are, because we're people. People are political. They're people. And those people come to church. And some of those people who come to church come to Catholic church. So we have Catholic theology, and we have American politics at our doorstep, pretty much. And no, we can't leave it outside. It comes in with us because we're people. We, we incorporate all of that. The first reading is very important in, along those lines because Jeremiah was a prophet inspired by God to do his bidding, to proclaim a message to the people of Israel. Background. Prophets were inspired people, probably mostly men, but we don't really know for sure. They're the only ones we have recorded. Inspired by God to bring a message of hope back to the nation of Israel and to usually organize the kings and put them in their correct positions. Kings were the kings of the people of Israel, but they were also regarded as the shepherds of the people of Israel. To be a king meant you were anointed by a prophet to take on this role. And, and as you know, especially if, if we look at the history now of, of Queen Elizabeth, when she was first anointed queen, she was anointed with holy oil on her head. The tradition still goes on, comes back from antiquity. So the role of, and, and she, not that we're part of the Church of England, she sort of exemplifies the head of the Church of England and a monarch of politics of, of, the, of the nation. Okay? We don't have to get into the discrepancies of that. So Jeremiah is told, go tell the king, and this is funny because he's talking about politics, go tell the king, Babylon is moving in on you. They're going to destroy you. Resign. Give in. Give up and let them take over. Now, this is odd because the people were very proud and we're not going to let down our defenses. And, and, and for some reason, I'm not God, God tells Jeremiah, no, tell the people to give up. To, don't fight. It'll only be worse if they do. Actually, what happens is true, but we don't know that at the time this is happening. So the, po the politicians around the king say, no, 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 no. This guy is saying too much against our politic here. He's speaking, you know, he's not speaking correctly. He's not speaking on our behalf. Jeremiah is really a, a pain in our side and we can't let him win over the people because he's encouraging the people, we've got to, we've got to give up. We're not going to fight. We've got to give in. So some of the politicians around the king 
let's get rid of them. So now this is, you gotta realize how important Jeremiah is. Jeremiah is inspired by God, even as a young man. As a matter of fact, when he was first called by God as a young person, he, was, he told God, I'm too young to do this. I, I, I can't take this on. This is too much of a responsibility. God said, you're going. When God chooses, you go. Okay, so he went, and he, and he, and he, he, he hid the history of it. So now, they say to the king, let's get it rid of him. The, 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 the symbolism is very interesting, too. They get rid of him by dumping him down a cistern. Now, a cistern is a long, long well from which water is preserved. When, those two times a year it rains. So there is water in the bottom of the well. But usually in the bottom of the cistern is mud. They dump him down the cistern. The only thing around him was mud. No water, no food. And he's sinking into the mud. Now, let's get rid of him. That's one way of getting rid of him. And somehow, God wakes them up, and he sends this messenger to the king and says, you can't do this. This is not right. It's not the way you get rid of enemies. You, 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 you got to bring him back up. So they rescued Re Jeremiah. But that cistern is very important because think of it as the height of the word of God being dumped into the mud. The message of God being dumped not appreciated, because it was offensive politically to those who were hearing it. So they dump the messenger. You dump the messenger, you dump in the message. But God had the ultimate last response, and he inspires other people to rescue him. Today we are here focused on Jesus in this very challenging reading and we hear Jesus say this after we know the story of Jeremiah. I've come to set fire on earth. And I wish it was already blazing. You think, oh, great, Jesus is going to set a beautiful fire on earth and light us all up and beautiful. No, 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 no. He's very serious what he's saying. You've got to choose me. You don't choose me, go to hell, basically. And he's saying that. And you say, well, that's old time. That's first century. Thank God that doesn't happen anymore. Unless we open up our newspapers, those of us who still read newspapers, or, or our Facebook or Twitter, or how do you get your media accounts, and we find out that Jesus is still somehow active in the world, turning us on fire. Just my own experience year or two ago, during the political upheaval and the change of, of uh, presidents. People put their opinions online. Nobody, no big deal, okay? More people put their opinions online. Until the fact that I like what this person says and I put that up on Facebook. I like what that person, I put that up on Facebook. Some people didn't like what I put up. No problem, it's free world. And we stop becoming friends, you know what that means on, online. Ma, don't be my friend. But then I realized it wasn't unique to me. This was happening. Households were being divided against households, friends against friends, children against parents, because of how they voted and for their political aspirations. And if you didn't agree, off, gone. Go to hell, in other words, what Jesus is saying. And I'm saying, you know, this, this happens in our own society today. The key word is Jesus, I have come. And he's come to set us in motion so that in our lives as Catholics in this world, and it's a tumultuous world, we have to keep the fire going. Not, not put it out. Keep the fire going. Keep the fire of our authenticity going. And you know what? It's not only here in our country, our state, our country, it's in our world. This morning, 
a church was burnt down with children in it in Egypt. Anti-Catholic sentiment. Only in Egypt? No. Anti-Catholic sentiment in Nigeria, in so many parts of the world, where priests are being killed and kidnapped, families are being destroyed, because they hold on to the fate of Christ, and the insurgents don't like that. They don't like the fact that you are holding on to the faith of Christ. So the insurgents of the world attack us. Like Jeremiah, there are times to fight and times not to fight. But we as Catholics always have to stand up for what we believe. Thank God, I don't think we have to, we're in this specific situation in which we have to bear arms to defend our churches. But some people, some Catholics around the world have to. And that's a bigger picture. But it's also happening in our local politics whether you're here in Florida or anywhere throughout the United States, the values of Christ's teachings, I say that rather than Christian teachings because I want to make it very specific, the values of Christ's teachings are being challenged and dumped down the tube, dumped down the cistern. And those who are promoting anti-Christian and anti-Catholic teachings are hoping to dump us down the tubes, down the cistern, with God's word. We're obligated to follow Christ, and it ain't gonna be easy, folks. It's not easy. The worst we can do is just close our eyes and not pay attention to it. The most we can do is stand up and realize we're gonna be challenged, and we have to stand up for what we believe. And it's not easy because Christ said, I, I wish the world were already on fire. I wish you were already blazing, I'll fin finish the sentence, with faith. Maybe at some points during our history as a church, during the period of the early martyrs, during the period of the Nazi occupation, certain groups of Catholics were blazing with their fire of faith. I don't know if it's happening today. You, you, can, you can inform me. We'll go back home and find out how many of our own family members cut us off because of who we are as Christians, have nothing to do with us because who we, what we believe in, in our country, but also our church. And that's really dicey. That's really politically sensitive. But we are Catholics. I know we were born American first, or whatever nationality we were born into first, and then we became Catholic. But our identity is as a member of the body of Christ. And Jesus, through St. Paul's inspiration, tells us to run through life, but keep our eye on the prize. He uses the metaphor of a race persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes on Jesus, the leader and the perfecter of faith. So whatever discussion we get into, political or social, Jesus is right here in front of us. And if we push Jesus away, we're not going to see his view of what we are as Christians Keeping our eye on Jesus will be challenging. We don't want to lose family and friends. That's not our goal. But Jesus said that could happen. That could happen. Go back to history. We know it happened during the early, early, early martyrdoms of the church, first three centuries. People were throwing their, their sisters and brothers to the lions metaphorically, but they were turning them in because they were Christian. They would refuse to obey the emperor, refuse to adore the emperor. So members of their own families would turn them over to the Roman authorities. That's, that's history. That's not novel. So maybe to those Christians hearing this gospel, it makes sense. Wake up. This gospel is for us for today, 21st century. It ain't easy being a Catholic. 
we've lost so many of our elements in the church, young adults in the church, to political movements, to social movements, to events of, of hypocritical priority. We've lost them. You and I have to bring them back through our action and faith and prayer. But like Jeremiah, sometimes we have to give in and let them make their own decisions, let them make their own mistakes. That doesn't feel good to say. If you don't agree with it, I agree with you. But that's the reality of the situation. Benedict, when he was, before he became Pope, now he's emeritus, you know that, said in the future, the church will be stronger, but smaller. Was he getting to this? Was he getting to the point where we realized that the super, superfluous members of the church who just come and go, maybe Easter and Christmas Catholics, I, I'm not judging anybody there, but maybe they will sort of disappear and you'll be left, the stronger church, the healthy church, that knows our eyes are on Jesus, not on who's in the White House, not who's the governor of our state. Our eyes are on Jesus. And with the eyes on Jesus, we can go to our election booths, we can go to our reading, we can go to our sharing information and let people know where we stand today. We have to be informed. We have to read. We have to talk. And we have to believe that our eyes are focused on Jesus.